video, we're going to look at drop down boxes and radio buttons for forms with JavaScript. Hey guys, John Alder here from CodeMe.com. And in the last video, we looked at basic web forms. In this video, we want to look at a bit more advanced topics in forms, specifically drop down select boxes and radio buttons. So let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got the file that we worked on in the last video, and I've renamed it forms2.html. And if we come through here, we see what we worked on in the last video. If we look at the web browser, go to our C JavaScript directory and click on forms2. It's just this very basic form. Now, before we get started, let's spruce this up a little bit and make this look nicer. So I'm just going to head over to getbootstrap.com. We're already using the Bootstrap CSS framework in our template code. So we could just come down here to forms and kind of just click any of this stuff, copy it, bring it back over here to our actual form. And below the form, I'm going to paste all this stuff in. And you can see this is just a basic form tag. So we've already got that. If we look through here, we don't need a label. So we can take that out. And this is an input type of email. and We're using text. So really, in order to bootstrapify this, all we have to do is give this a class with form-control. So I'm going to come up here to our input box and just give that a class of form control. And we can kind of get rid of all the rest of this stuff except you'll notice the button has a class of btn slash btn primary. So if we want to make our buttons look pretty, we'll just add that as well. So we'll get rid of the rest of that. And let's go to our buttons. And yeah, might as well, let's do this. A primary is a blue color. I like secondary, which is a gray color. So we'll change that. And then we'll do the same thing for this reset button as well. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here and just kind of hit reload. And boom, that looks nicer. The buttons are more buttony. If we click on this, it glows and okay, whatever, <laughs> just slightly nicer. So what do we want to do in this video? First, let's do drop down boxes. Technically they're called select boxes. And for that, let's head over to bootstrap and let's see, click on select here. And that's just like a drop down box, right? So let's just copy this whole code, head back over here and below our input box, let's see right here. Let's just put some space and bop this in and tab that over. Okay, so underneath here, let's also put a couple more line breaks. And just right off the bat, let's just save this and head back over here and hit reload and see what we've got. We've got this thing. It says open this menu or open the select menu. It has one, two, three. Okay, let's modify this. And instead of it saying open this select menu, let's say or pick your favorite color. And then let's just go, I don't know, red, blue, and green. Now, these all have a value, one, two, and three. We want to change that. You could keep it to one if you wanted to, but I'm going to change it to the actual value. So red, blue, and green. Okay. So we've got this select. It's a class of form select. And we've got this label. We really don't need that. What we do need is an ID. And I'm going to call this selected. So now, just like with our input box, we can get this element by ID and call selected to see what they selected, right? So let's copy this and come back up here. And let's see, let's create another variable. So let's go let color equal. And again, it's going to be document dot get element by ID. And we want to get the selected element because that's what we called it. And again, we just want to call the dot value. Pretty simple, nothing at all different here. So now we've got this color variable. Let's come down here to our output and let's say hello name and then add another thing. And let's go on another line, maybe, maybe. And let's go on another line, maybe. A line break. Let's say your favorite color is and then add in that color. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Head back over here, hit reload. Let's see, my name is John and my favorite color is blue. We click the form, it says, hello, John, your favorite color is blue. So nothing earth shattering here. This is pretty much just like what we learned in the last video with the input box, right? Now, what about radio buttons? If we come back over here to bootstrap and let's look at checks and radios and we'll look at checkboxes a little bit later. 
In this video, I just want to look at radio buttons because they're a little bit complicated. And these are radio buttons. And it's basically a, a one or the other. Right? You can have as many as you want. You can have 10 of them, but you can only select one out of any group of radio buttons. That's different than a checkbox. If we come up here and look at a checkbox, we can select as many checkboxes as we want. That's how checkboxes work. But with radio buttons, you can only select one. So, okay, I'm going to grab this code here. Now we're using this bootstrap code. You don't have to use bootstrap. All of the things I'm showing you in this video are the same if you use just regular HTML like we did in the last video. We're just sprucing it up a little bit with some fancier looking forms in this video. So, all right, let's come down here below our selected thing and just paste in that code. And let me kind of tab it over a little bit just to, all right, that looks good. So we've got an input class and a label and here, I don't know what can we do. Let's go male and female. I don't know, male and female. And here we've got an input class of form check input. That's the bootstrap style. And we've got a type of radio. They're both type radio. And they've got a name. And you'll notice here it's flex radio default. And down here it's flex radio default. Now we can call this anything we want. So I'm just going to call this Bob, right? It doesn't matter what you call it for the name but each of these have to be the same. So the way HTML and JavaScript keeps track of your radio buttons and groups them together is if they have the same name. If you have different names, it's, it assumes that's a different group of radio buttons and you can toggle accordingly between that other group. But we want this in one group. We're gonna call him Bob, whatever. And now this one has an idea of flex radio default one. I'm gonna just change this to radio one. And then this one down here will be radio two. And we're going to use those IDs sort of like the rest here when we give these other things IDs, uh, the idea of name, the idea of selected, but it's slightly different with radio buttons. So this is for uh, radio one and for radio two. And this is just the labels, right? We really don't care. But OK, let's go ahead and save this and head back over here and see how that looks. OK, we've got male and female. We need a line break. So let's come down here and add a couple of line breaks. All right. So now we come back here and hit reload. And you'll notice we can toggle between the two and only select one. So, okay, that's great. Now, how do we get the selected thing, determine what has been selected? Now, this is where JavaScript once again gets very stupid. It does this a lot. You know, in other languages, it's very easy to get things like checkboxes and radio buttons and anything from a form, you just get it. Not so with JavaScript, we need to actually kind of do some logic and it's a whole thing. So let's come up here and let's see, let's go radio button nonsense, right? And we need to do some logic. So first we need to define our buttons. So let's go let button one equal, and this is going to be document dot get element by ID and which ID radio one. And there we go. Now there's another way to do this as well, but it's almost more convoluted. So we're just going to stick with the get element by ID, but you can Google it if you want. You can, you can get a query selector. It's, it's weird. It's even weirder than this. And this is kind of weird. So we're just going to use this method. So here we've got let button one and here we want let button two to equal radio Two. So this radio one and radio two are obviously from down here where we gave it an ID of radio one and radio two, right? So that's pretty straightforward. But now we've got two different variables here, right? It's not like this color where whatever we selected gets assigned to the variable and we can just run with it. Here we've got two buttons. So we can't do something with both of them. We need to determine which one is checked. So let's say uh, logic to see which radio is checked. So this is going to be if button one dot checked equals true. Well, let's create a variable called my button and let's set that equal to whatever is in button one dot value. All right. So very similar to this up here, right? So here, this dot checked obviously checks to see whether or not it has been selected. It's been checked, right? If it is, that will be true. And then we'll assign my button to be button one dot value. Else, since we only have two, 
we could just do an else statement. Otherwise, you would have to do an else if statement, right? So if button one, else if, if button two, else if, if button three, else if, if button four, else if button five, else if button six, on and on and on, however many buttons you have. But we've only got two, so we'll just do an else statement here instead of an, instead of an if else. Otherwise, this is going to be button two dot value, which is, of course, this guy right here. Okay. So now we've got this my button. We can do stuff with it. So let's come down to our greeting here and your favorite color is. And up here it says, hello, name. So let's go, hello, my button plus a space plus name. <laughs> this is getting a little convoluted. Uh, if we put all this down on one line or so, that helps a little bit. Let's save this, head back over here, hit reload. Now I'm going to type in John. My favorite color is this time green. I am a male. We submit the form. It says, hello on John. Your favorite color is green. So that's not great. The reason why it's going on, and also we, I guess we need a space here. Can we not do that? There's our space, right? Uh, but why is it saying on? Well, because in our code, we forgot to give it a value. So if we come down here to our, here is our, it looks like radio buttons. You'll notice there's a class, a type, a name, and an ID. We didn't give, a, give it a value. So let's give this a value of mail. And let's give this other one, which is radio two. And you'll notice it's checked. We can take that off if you want. Value equals female. Now by default, one of these is checked or not because of that checked. I'm going to change that one to this guy up here and we just type in checked. I don't want to spell it right though. We head back over here, it reload. You notice now mail is checked by default when we reload it. Again, we can undo that if we want by just taking that checked off and we can bring it back over to radio two if we want. All right. If we save this, head back over here, hit reload. Now it's female by default. So whatever you want. Uh, so let's go John, and this time let's go red, and let's say mail, submit the form. Hello, mail, John. <laughs> Your favorite color is red. So now if I come back over here and hit reload and type in Tina, Tina's favorite color is blue. She is, oh, no, she's a female. Let's go ahead and submit the form. Hello, female, Tina. Your favorite color is blue. So, okay, not too bad, a little weird. Maybe I'm a little too hard on JavaScript. This wasn't that bad. I just don't like having to define variables for every radio button and then loop kind of do some logic. And I suppose you could also create a for loop and add an array or so. I don't know. You could play around with this. And if you had many buttons to choose from instead of typing all this out, but you get the idea. You have to come through here. And the reason why we're doing this is because, you know, or we could just call button one value or button two value. But if we did that, and they're not selected, they're gonna return null or return undefined or something like that, and it's gonna mess everything up. So we have to run some logic to make sure they have been clicked. So that's what we're doing here, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 190,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodeMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.